Next is the public hearing on the amendment to the Warren County Code, section 56-3, to amend the rules for address by non-members during public presentation comment period to parallel the language in the County of Warren, Virginia, meeting and policy procedures. Yes, Mr. Chair. The Board of Supervisors follows the County of Warren, Virginia, meeting policy and procedures which are included in your packet, and they were updated at the January 8th meeting. Section 5-5.1 of the procedures detail the rules for public presentations. The rules now state that speakers will have five minutes and shall be limited to one appearance at each regular meeting of the Board of Supervisors. And the speakers can only speak once on the same subject or three times on the same subject in each 12-month period. The rules also state that a total of 20 minutes will be devoted to public presentations. The time period for each speaker can be extended to up to 10 minutes at the discretion of the chairman. Section 56-3 of the county code also addresses presentations by members of the public during board supervisor meetings. The language in that code section, which is from the 70s, actually is different than the language that was has been in place in, uh, in our meeting policy and procedures and was updated, as I said, on January 8th. Um, to avoid conflict between the county code and the meeting policy and procedures, we are proposing amending the language in the county code to parallel the language and the policy and procedures. When we authorize, when the board supervisors authorize the advertisement of this public hearing, back in December, that code section had, had stated that speakers will only have three minutes for a total of 15 minutes, and since that point on January 8th, we did um, amend that to state that speakers would have five minutes and could have an extension up to 10 minutes. So since, uh, since we're proposing less restrictive language, we don't have to re-advertise the public hearing. Um, the public hearing has been properly advertised, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Oh yeah, Mr. Whitten, I, I have a question I can start. Uh, speaking on a subject three times within a year, that was actually approved in January of 2017? Uh, yes, that's correct. Um, we um, changed our um, procedures in 2017. Uh, we used a couple other localities examples to expand on our procedures. And, um, so we didn't have to use Robert's rules as much and our own rules and procedures. And that was one of the rules we did adopt in 2017 was that you could, the speaker can only speak on the same subject three times in a 12 month period. Um, okay, so just for clarity, that existed in 2017, 2018, and continued to 19, correct? Uh, that's correct. All right, thank you very much. Is there anyone else that has a question for Mr. Whitty? I didn't necessarily have a question. But... I just wanted to expand on that a little bit um, of what the cover sheet said. Uh, the original ordinance that came, came about in 1975, it came up because somebody went to a planning commission meeting and they felt they were treated rudely and didn't have the opportunity to speak. So the Board of Supervisors at that time adopted this ordinance along that language. Um, and then I think as early at ASTA to do some research, uh, and at least as far back as 87, public presentations were added to the formal agenda and has been a part of the agenda ever since with individual boards um, at the organizational meeting tweaking some of the, the ongoing rules. Um, I was not a rule. This did and did not come up because of Mr. Hager. Um, it did not come up because we were trying to deny him or any other citizen the right to speak, but he had brought up the, this particular ordinance, which I was not aware of. I don't know if anybody on this board was aware of Mr. Sarah, were you? To be honest with you, no, I wasn't. So nobody was aware of that, but in looking at it, it appeared that it, it, it didn't gel with what our rules were, and we didn't want to, uh, we wanted to make those uniform. Um, and as, as stated, the, the time limit has been extended. Um, and and I, I don't know, I mean, I think that five minutes and certainly 10 minutes, somebody should be able to make their salient points in that time frame. Um, and the other thing we do to try to limit it 
But at that time is, because as you saw tonight, there was a consultant in NASDAQ, there was a, the gentleman that drove up from Richmond as far as the bond. When we have um, public hearings, a lot of times the attorney will um, uh, accompany the, the applicant. And while that attorney's sitting there, he's building for that time that he sits here. So to be fair to the people who are already on the agenda, that's why we look to kind of uh, <coughs> uh, limiting it in that portion. My time on this, this board, uh, I think for the most part, we have granted additional time, either individually or totally. Uh, and again, another reason for the, the time limit is we need to start our public hearings as close to 7.30 as possible. Uh, and I believe other, most other localities have some sort of limit on public presentations. Uh, to me, the updated language performs two functions. First of all, it would mirror our rules. And second, to me, it is less restrictive than the current language in the ordinance. Because under the current language, two board members have to agree to let someone speak. Under our rules, under public presentations, you don't need to have that. Anybody can speak on any subject. Um, so, I, personally, I, I see that as being less restricted. Um, and the other thing, too, is if any member of the public <coughs> wastes more time, then they can request that they be placed on the agenda. And that needs to be sponsored by a board member and then approved. And again, I've never seen that not be approved. So if somebody does feel they need more time than the 10 minutes, they do have that right to be placed on the agenda. And that's all I have this time. Else. I was just going to clarify, I wasn't aware of this until actually Mr. Hager brought it to my attention. So that's how I found out about it. Okay. Public hearing is now open. Ms. Mounts, has anyone signed up? Yes, sir. John <laughs> Lundberg. <laughs> And please remember, we're still under the three-minute rule. If someone would like to speak for a group of people, then it would be ten minutes. Thank you. Mr. Stanley, can you be the timekeeper, please? My name is, <clears throat> my name is John Lundberg. I live at 203 Peachtree Court here in Virginia. For half of my U.S. Army military career of 30 years, I was a public affairs officer answering questions from reporters and elected officials like yourself. The silence last year of the Warren County Board of Supervisors to credible allocations of graft, corruption, and rot of the Economic Development Authority Board was beyond the pale. You all did virtually nothing after a courageous private citizen of this community, Mark Ager, came before you three times in 2018 and talked for a total of about 37 minutes, presenting solid evidence that, one, the EDA board gave away 30 acres of EDA property to a shell company. Two, two fake crimes were committed. Three, the EDA board held illegal closed meetings. Pardon me for a minute. This is I understand to address the public hearing and the code section. I am. I'm not this part of it. The EDA board told the front row police department to stop investigating a crime. And five, some EDA board members refused to answer legitimate questions from you all on the panel, the very board that put them on the EDA board. As a result of your investigation to allegations of some of the worst examples of public corruption I've ever seen, $140,000 of taxpayers' money is now being spent to investigate the EDA, money that would have been saved if you all had taken prompt action a year ago. The reason Mark Ager was able to talk for 37 minutes on three different meetings last year was because Ordinance 56-3 of the Warren County Code, passed in 1975, 44 years ago, allows two of you to allow members coming before this board to speak to long, to speak as long as they are presenting relevant information in the estimation of the two board members. Now, three members of this board, Carter, Murray, and Gladys, are shamefully and disgracefully punishing pushing an amendment to an ordinance that would, one, eliminate the ability of two board members to allow an individual to come and talk as long as he was presenting relevant information. Two, limit a speaker to no more than five minutes. And three, limit the number of meetings on which 
an individual can come and talk on the same subject to more than three in a 12 month, 12 month period. I've had, I've heard all the arguments of County Attorney Dan Witten talk about how good this amendment will <coughs> shorten board meetings, improve the efficiency of county government, is similar to ordinance of other counties in this commonwealth, etc. And it's all baloney. Mr. Witten knows it, and so do Carter, Murray, and Gavin. This amendment is clearly designed to silence people trying to expose public corruption in Warren County. I've never seen anything like it. Members of this Board of Supervisors do not pass this amendment. Key ordinance 56-3, just as it is. It has served Front Royal well for 44 years in the past. It will do so in the future. Also, many people behind me tonight in this audience will do everything they can to vote out of office at the first opportunity any Board of Supervisor member that votes for this amendment. Thank you for your time. We do not afford us in the meeting. There should be a corner we are supposed to have. We do not bring placard cards. We address the board, and we do not have outbursts. You can thank them afterwards, but not this way. Thank you. Ms. Mounts, is there anyone else? Dale Carpenter. My name is Dale Carpenter. I live over in uh, Lena Court. And I have a hopefully slightly less different message here. Can we have your address, please? Yes, 509 Lena Court. And uh, you just cut half of my presentation short because Tony Carter basically answered what I was going to ask about the, uh, the change in the initial approach. But as I understand it, and first of all, I want to thank the supervisors individually and as a group, really your leadership here in Warren County and for the hours and the effort and the abuse that you rightfully or wrongly absorbed there. Uh, my remarks will be short. Uh, Mr. Carter did answer my question with regard to the, the uh, additional 10 minutes. I didn't know about that. I, don't, I didn't see that in what I had. But I understand that also if once a, an item has been presented, a resident like myself could request to have it put on the agenda, which would give it an additional extended time. I have two questions, and I don't know if the question answered, but what is the criteria for getting a issue on the agenda, and who makes the decision that it can go on to the agenda? You would bring that up to your supervisor, and then your supervisor could request that to put on the agenda. Thank you. <coughs> Krista Adenich. <coughs> Krista Adenich, 1917, Mr. Jackson Highway, from Virginia. Thank you for allowing me to speak this evening. I concur with Mr. Longberg's statements. I just think that there needs to be transparency always with board members and with what's going on with the EDA. It's very upsetting for our community, and this needs to be addressed. And I think the best way to address these issues is to be able to speak about them publicly. Um, I'm okay with time limits because I think that you can delve into what you need to delve into in an allotted time. I'm not okay with being only allotted the opportunity to speak three times in on one subject in a one-year period, I think it greatly limits, um, you know, opinion and statement and fact that absolutely needs to be presented to this board. Um, I would urge you to keep the current standard on on hand and to not adopt this new um, amendment or whatever it is that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Leslie Matthews. <clears throat> Leslie Matthews, 143 Matthews Lane, Bentonville, Virginia. Good evening. I am here to reference you to your motion to have Warren County Code 563 changed. I strongly oppose Mrs. Gladys, Mr. Murray, 
and Mr. Carter's lack of consideration to the citizens of this county to provide adequate time to present their concerns to the board when necessary. My grandfather, George Brown Batterly, served this county for 28 years in the same position that you serve in, Mrs. Gladys. In fact, you have even stated that he encouraged you to run for that position. Sadly, he is no longer with us, but I stand here tonight in his honor and for his efforts in helping to bring into existence the Warren County Code 56-3 in 1975. My grandfather believed wholeheartedly that all citizens of Warren County have the right to be heard. Mrs. Gladys, Mr. Murray, and Mr. Carter, to set a timer on citizens who are presenting serious concerns to you is totally absurd, and it's downright disgraceful. My son currently serves in the U.S. Army and will be deployed within days. That's the truth. He, along with other sons and daughters, are who are preserving mine and your rights to live freely in this nation. Do not take our freedoms for granted, and do not take upon yourselves to the right to limit our freedoms. I'm a firm believer that our government, whether it be on the national or the local level, only works best when its citizens are a part in the decisions that are being made on their behalf. If you do not want to hear what we, the people, who voted you into your public office positions have to say, then please resign immediately. We will be happy to put someone in your positions who will hear and act upon what's good and right for all of us. Please keep Code 56-3 in existence. Thank you. Melanie Salins. Drive, Middletown, Virginia. You are my representative. Yeah. Allow me to remind you the definition of representative is a person chosen to act or speak for others. You are chosen to sit in those seats. Your duty is to carry out the will of the people who put you there. How can you do that if you refuse to listen to your constituents? I object to the rule that limits public comments to a mere 15 to 20 minutes per meeting. This would allow time for only three to five people to speak. If for some reason you find your gallery full of people wanting to speak on a topic, then it's safe to assume that topic is a big deal and needs adequate time to be discussed by everyone who feels called to do so. I object to the rule that limits speaking on a topic only three times per year. If a concerned citizen has to bring an issue to your attention more than three times that year, then it seems more like your problem in failing to resolve the matter. And the other aspect is that there's a gray area in this rule. Who determines whether the topic is the same or not? I spoke to town council many times regarding the new hospital. At first it was about the zoning, and then later about the bond issue. Those are two very different topics, however they fall under the same heading as being about the new hospital. Who gets to decide which one counts towards my three for the year? Who gets to decide to silence me? I have been trying to understand the logic and reasoning behind wanting such strict rules. We are a relatively small county. I rarely see a lot of people at a meeting. So I was trying to understand what spawned this. I spoke to Mr. Witten today to try to get a better understanding. He agreed that there is not currently an issue, but said that these rules are more of a preventative. The comment makes me wonder, what are we trying to prevent exactly? Why do we expect there will be a drastic uptick in citizens wishing to, to address their government? Why do you fear that citizens may want to address you in the future? An interested and involved community is not a thing I usually associate with needing to be prevented. He said in other localities, they had similar rules, specifically York County. So I contacted some of our neighboring counties. I spoke to Prince William, Fer uh, Frederick, and Loudoun counties. None 
of which have rules to limit the times a speaker can address a topic during the year. Prince William County does not limit the number of people allowed to speak during a meeting, nor do they limit the number of times a person can speak on a topic during the year. Prince William County is actually actively trying to encourage more public input and created something called Speak Up Prince William. It's an online option to share and comment with board members online for people who may fear public speaking. Frederick County allows for non-agenda public comments during both the beginning and the end of meetings. They do not limit the number of people allowed to speak and do not limit the number of times a year a person can speak on a topic. Loudoun County has taken steps to make meetings more accessible for public input. They have started staggering the days of the week and the times the meetings are held. They want to ensure all citizens have a convenient time to be heard. They do limit public comments to an hour at each meeting, but have no yearly limit on speaking topics. So I ask you, with the trend around us to be encouraging public input and finding ways to make local government more accessible, why is it that our government is wanting restrictive rules? I want you to understand that these rules come across to your constituents. I want you to understand the way in which these rules come across to your constituents. They are insulting, they are alienating, and they are infuriating. We, the general public, are fed up with the government doing things to us. Governing should be done with us and for us, but not <coughs> to us. People get angry when they feel unheard or when they feel like there is nothing they can do to influence change in their community. We are a community. We are supposed to be working together. We want our government <coughs> to care about us. And the first step in showing that you are a caring government is to be willing to hear us. Thank you. Mike Sands. <coughs> Good evening. Mike Salins, 95 Murray's Drive. Uh, I'm here tonight to voice my concerns regarding the citizens' ability to voice their concerns. Uh, my understanding is that the rules limit the number of times the subject can be brought up as well as limiting the number of people who can voice their concerns during these county meetings. My concern is that if a citizen makes you aware of an issue and there is no resolution or action, you can only bring it up two more times. This makes me feel as if you don't care about the concerns of the citizens you're representing. If my boss told me to do something three times and I didn't do it, he's not just going to sit there and be okay with it. He would fire me immediately. The other issue is limiting the number of citizens who can speak at these meetings. This goes the same way as the other issue. You're not making us feel like you care about our voice and you are our only representation. As a county supervisor, you're supposed to work for the people and listen to the people to ensure our county is being run the way that the people want it. Please reconsider making this a hard rule and allow us to help you represent us. A government of the people, by the people, and for the people can't exist if you don't listen to the people. Thank you. Ms. Bunt? Robert Edenich? <coughs>
something on the agenda, as Mr. Carter had mentioned, you know, that requires you guys to do that for us, right? That may or may not happen. You know, I've been around, I've talked to several of you over the years uh, on different subjects. You know, at, at that point, it's your, it's your decision on whether that gets put to the agenda, not the person's in, you know, own interest. In, you know, their interests lie with you. So I think at that point, um, having a public forum to come and discuss with you know, the members of the board here is, is critical. So I, I <coughs> kindly ask you, please think about the rules that you are proposing to change in the code. And I don't think that it needs to be changed that much, you know, but especially the three, uh, the three, uh, three times, you know, the single subject, that's, that's really my, the biggest thing for me. You know, it, uh, that, that, that should not go into effect. If you could, you know, maybe amend your rules at a different point, you know, just, you know, hold off and vote tonight and then the rules vote again. I think that'd be a good thing. Thank you. Mark Egger. I wasn't planning on addressing you all again, but your address, please. Mark Edgar, 721 Campbell Circle. I wasn't planning on addressing you all again, but your foolish actions compel me to make another futile attempt at reason, which seems to be in short supply around here. First, I'd like to correct the false narrative made by your attorney, Mr. Witten, that this proposal to scrap County Code 5623 has nothing to do with me. You all did not even know about this Code 5623 until I pointed it out to you, Mr. Carter, when you previously attempted to shut me up. In fact, I have a photo taken right before your November 20th meeting after you called me out into the hallway before the meeting in a failed attempt to shut me up. I told you to go ask your overpriced lawyer over there to go look up County Code 56.3, and here's the photo of you two discussing the code immediately before the meeting. I'd also like to correct the false narrative also made by your attorney, Mr. Witten, that the board has been discussing this change for several months. I know that transparency is not one of this board's strengths, but I dare you to take a poll right now of all five members of the board to find out when they first heard of this proposed deletion of Code 56.3, and we'll see if that is an accurate statement of Mr. Witten's. It is your meeting rules that need to be changed to agree with the county Code 56.3 and not vice versa. 56.3 allows you to hear from a member of the public if two members of your board request it. What is wrong with that? Why are you trying to fix something that's not broken? You don't care that two members of your board wanted to hear what I had to say? Instead of deleting 56.3, you should be adding its wording to your meeting rules. Instead of trying to shut me up, you should be thanking me for doing your job for free. I started looking into the EDA over two years ago after my daughter, who was a town councilman at the time, was verbally assaulted by the political establishment of this community for asking a few simple questions that should have been able to answer it in about five minutes. And her questions have still not been answered over two years later. I can't for the life of me figure out why you didn't want to hear the facts about the lunacy going on over at the EDA. And everything I stated to you this past year in February, May, and November was true. But you all prefer to be ostriches with your head stuck in the sand. A lot of the problems with the EDA could have been avoided if you all had been paying attention. And now you're spending taxpayer money to pay the EDA's auditing and legal bills because apparently they don't have any money left in their checkbook. I wonder, where did all the money go? But you didn't care that 30 acres and a $10 million loan were given to a shell company with no contracts and no jobs. You didn't care that land was said to be donated for a phony workforce housing project that was actually purchased for $445,000. You didn't care that the EDA executive director and the Warren County Sheriff were business partners who bought $1,949,000 of real estate in 2017. You didn't care that the executive director claimed to have won almost $2 million at the slot machines, which is mathematically impossible. If you believe that fairy tale, why don't you give her the $140,000 and in no time at all she'll turn it into $2 million. <laughs> you didn't care that the executive director staged vandalism at the EDA office and tried to frame my daughter. You Mr. didn't Edgar, care that the Mr. executive Edgar, director staged here, vandalism. We are here to discuss 56.3, not the EDA. I'm discussing 56.3. I'm telling you why you shouldn't change your rule of 56.3. Do you, you understand we want to stick to 
what we were trying to do to try to address this 56-3. You, you, you are running with the EDA. Continue. I didn't know this was supposed to be a question and answer session here. Continue speaking if you have to. You didn't care that the executive director staged vandalism at her own house and tried to frame your, frame your fellow supervisor, Mr. Sayer. You didn't care that through all this insanity, the EDA board, who you all appoint, continued to express their full support of the executive director and in fact gave her a raise to show their support. And your response is to tell me, the piano teacher, to shut up. What's wrong with you people? You need to get your heads out of your backsides, pay attention, and do your job. You should be saying thank you to me, so I'll just say, you're welcome. Maybe I'll send you a bill for my services. Nancy Heflin. Hi, my name is Nancy Heflin. I'm a Warren County resident for my entire life. I live at 6 Grand Road in Linden, Virginia. And I thought perhaps I'd had astral travel when I went to bed and woke up and saw that you don't want people talking to you who have problems to reveal. I don't understand that. So in reference to that 56-3, if you vote to run that tonight and let that go, you need to resign tomorrow. Because people have a right to speak, and why nobody wants to know what's going on in this county, who has some authority, is really beyond me. There's no oversight. You didn't even know the tax, new market tax things. Every person up there owns a house. And you didn't even know a loan was closed or not closed. No oversight. And you all just want to shut people down. I don't want to be a part of that. I was embarrassed at how you spoke to Mr. Egger at the other three meetings, which I watched on video. It was very humiliating. And I think you need to clean up your act. And if you don't want to listen to the citizens, resign and we'll get some people who do. That's all I have. Tom Bailey. Tom Ballant, 117 Lee Street. I, I do want to thank the board. I know it's a difficult position that you're in. There's a, each one of us are part of the family. We live in Front Royal. This is part of our family. We don't go home and we don't relax thinking that everything's okay. Because we know a lot of people are counting on us. You know, as a father and a husband, my wife and my children count on me. You've got the entire community here in Front Royal counting on you. And we put our faith in you and thinking that things are, are working fine. I, I understand some restrictions on speaking because there's it has to be some time to type the time limit. But the three times in a year, I was not aware of some of the things that were going on in the community until one of our citizens decided it was important enough to look a little further. And every now and then, it's a, a citizen of the community that, that steps in and takes the bull by the horn and says, wait a minute, there's something going on here. And I understand the thorn in the side. Sometimes we're so busy that, ah, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit too much and it's overwhelming. I appreciate that. But every now and then, we need that voice. And you can't limit that voice to three times a year that's ridiculous when you have an important subject going on. You know, they, he brought up some legitimate points in the past. I, I think if something happens here as far as limiting a, a citizen to speak to just three times a year, that's going to bring up all kinds of questions. I honestly believe that you will be voted out of office unless there's some type of amendment to that rule that's going on. We do appreciate the work that you're doing. We know that it's a difficult job. And I, and I know that, you know, emotions can get hot when it, and things get personal. That just happens. Our jobs are difficult. Life is difficult. We all go back home and, and maybe we have a family member that's dying. But then we come up and we find out, why am I going to spend time coming to a, a community board meeting? You know what? Because it's our families. 
and it's our generations behind us that are counting on us. And if this passes, I think at some point it's going to hit the news, and they're going to say, wow, another small town you know, politics. I, I think oversight is appreciated. Independent external audit of the EDA. You know, you want to bring it out in the open. Transparency is the big word. So I, I appreciate you know your time, and I truly hope that you consider the people that are here tonight and that are speaking. Thank you. Ms. Michelle Mathai. Michelle Matthew, and I live at 20 Blue Ridge Avenue here in Front Row. And I wanted to thank you for hearing me today. I understand you're just making the verbiage consistent. You're trying to limit things. However, I feel that by keeping these restrictions in place, you're doing a serious disservice to your constituents. Instead of limiting our time to speak with you, why not engage us more? For positive change, we have to be willing to hear new ideas, concerns, and even complaints. How about we flip the script? Why not consider ways to get the public more involved? Why not change the way we see our local government? I've worked with businesses to help with positive branding and marketing, and I wanted to offer you guys some ideas. For example, create an email opt-in option so people can be consistently updated and informed. This would help the people not on social media and eliminate misinformation. Go to high schools and explain how this process works. Start engaging our youth. Post the agendas and minutes on Facebook and share them all over like crazy. Have office hours in which people can meet and speak with you in case people are too scared to come up here and speak with you here because this is intimidating for some people. Have an informal meet and greet so people can get to know you and get to know who represents them. So we can put a face to all these decisions. And during all of this time, remind people that they can come to these meetings and have a voice because their opinion matters. And it's important that you express that and that you know that. I hope you get this point. Why not follow the example of counties in Northern Virginia who don't limit public speaking and that you want to emulate. Attract the people that live there to our beautiful community by showing how forward thinking and progressive we are to have a government so in tune with its community. Thank you. Sonia Calver. Hi. Uh, Sonia Carlborg, 210 West 1st Street, Front Royal. I'm so moved by the eloquence of my fellow citizens tonight. Um, I had written some things down, but I'm not going to say them. Um, the rules that you are putting forth, that you're proposing this evening, might be good for our marriage, but um, I think for our town government, they don't really work. <laughs> um, you do need to hear from us, and um, I, I agree that the three times a year part doesn't make any sense at all. What if I come in in January and I come in in August and I come in December? How are you going to know? Who's, who's going to track that? Um, the number of people addressing an issue, I know that Tom Sayre remembers um, the very long meeting where everyone came in to talk about the library. <laughs> I think you were in meeting in town council until midnight uh, and asked us, oh please, could you not do that again? And I, no, I, I don't mean you personally, but but um, I remember when library issues came up again. It was said we we understand what you all said before. We don't need to do all that again. <laughs> you know? So um, I think it's I think it's very effective. Also, sometimes people um, have a lot to say at the last minute, and they're not necessarily going to contact somebody, and or they don't know the procedures. Um, I know that after Mr. Eggers' um, <coughs> first presentation, I got in touch with two of you by email, and you know who you are, and I never received a response. So um, I eventually, I guess, maybe received a response um, through the grapevine or something. 
but um, it wasn't appropriate. I do like the idea of office hours, like, like teachers, um, that you would be available and we could stop by and, and talk with you about the issues that concern us. Um, thank you very much for your service, and um, I oppose this, these changes. David Means. Looks like you're free, free tonight. <laughs> Dave Means, uh, 210 West First Street, North Royal, Virginia. And um, I, I just don't know what to say. I've, we have had such interesting speakers, and I'm sure you've heard it all, and, and I'm sure you're giving it a great deal of thought at this point. And I just wish you well in your decision. <laughs> Jean McGurk. Hello, I'm Jean McGurk, 252 Chestnut Hill Drive, Front Royal. And I do want to thank you all for your service. But I would like to um, point out, Mr. Chairman, that at the beginning you said, wow, look at all these people here. This is so unusual. Well, they're all here to talk about this subject. And I think it's gone over more than the 20-minute limit you want to put on an individual talk, if I understand the change in the rules correctly. Um, and I do agree with um, what someone said a little earlier, that um, if you have to make your personal rules agree to the other rules, that you're doing it the wrong way. Make your rules agree to the other rules and give people that chance to talk. And I think especially, the, the, as many people have pointed out, the three times a year talk is, uh, to talk, is, is pretty limiting. Um, we are supposed to be a nation of the people, for the people, and by the people, as was already quoted tonight. And you can't have that if you don't let the people in. And it's not, you know, this is a hometown, a small town. This isn't the federal government where you have 300 million people trying to address you. And I think that you should just reconsider the way you want to try and put this balancing of the two different sets of rules together and maybe do it the other way. Thank you. And thank you for your service. Ms. Robert Rice. Robert Rice, and I'm 72 Burgess Lane from North. Um, I've been reading a lot about the collapse of Western civilization. Uh, I'm happy to say that the United States is better off than any other part of the world. We came, many of our forebears came from Europe. Europe is committing suicide culturally and demographically. Uh, we're much better off. But we're not heck of a lot better off. Uh, our country stands right now at, at more divided than it's ever been since the Civil War. And part of it has to do with uh, keeping the uh, laws and traditions of which it was founded. Uh, and when the Constitutional Convention ended in 1787, uh, Benjamin Franklin was asked, what have we got? And he said, a republic, if you can keep it. And John Adams uh, said that, uh, the Constitution will work only for immoral people. George Washington said the Constitution would only work for religious people. Uh, we, according to the latest polls, we have neither a moral nor a religious people, but they're in the minority. Boy, what does that have to do with your, your changes today? Well, I'm afraid what you have presented is a diminishment of the freedom of speech. And that's what concerns me. I think you made a mistake in the changes you want to make. Don't do it. It is a diminishment of the freedom of speech, one of our primary goal, uh, great freedoms. Don't do it. Please, help save this portion of our country. Thank you.
Mr. Chairman, no one else has signed up. I missed this item. She, can I speak? Yes, ma'am. Come forward, please. Amber Pomore, 3574 Houseville Road, Brooklyn. I'm not going to take three minutes or five minutes. I'm just going to take one minute. The First Amendment, Amendment 1, the United States Constitution, prevents the government from making laws which respect an establishment of religion, prohibit the free exercise of religion, or abridge the freedom of speech, the freedom of the press, the right to peacefully assemble, or the right to petition the government of redress and grievances. It was adopted on December 15, 1791, as one of the ten amendments that constitute the Bill of Rights. In case you guys didn't know that, but I hope you really did. I'm just here to remind each of you to consider your role as a public official. You were elected by us, your constituents, and I really hope that you listen to everyone who spoke tonight, because if you think we sound like a broken record, we feel like a broken record. And then I'll just leave you with this. Um, it's a really important piece of the Gettysburg Address that touches on the part where Abraham Lincoln said, the sacrifices of those who died at Gettysburg in defense of those principles and exhorted his listeners to resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that the government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. So that is just my reminder to you guys that you do serve your constituents. We put you in office for you to carry forth the job that we haven't done, but we trust in you to do. If you don't want to do that, then it is as simple as resigning. Um, however, you all will at some point be up for re-election if that is what you so seek to do. And I understand that you want the public concern to be effective and efficient for everyone's time and involvement, but we will not be silenced, even if you decide to remove Ordinance 56-3. So, um, I also just wanted to add, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. Um, if the issues were addressed effectively, we would not need to speak more than three times per year. So I think that speaks in volumes for itself. If you have somebody that comes in and needs to speak five times in one year on one issue, I don't think you guys are addressing the concerns properly. Thank you for all that you've done and continue to do, and I hope that you'll take into consideration everything that's been said tonight when you vote. Can I speak, please? Mr. Matt, come forward, please. Name and address. Steve Colors, 1605 Rocky Hollow Road, Hill, Virginia. Uh, many, many years ago, I'm not a young man anymore. Uh, I've, I've lived here all my life, born here, all my family's lived here. Uh, back in the day, Warren County, uh, our landfill was fixing to close. It was full. We had to do something. And two of the places being looked at was where Andy Guest Park is now and where uh, out on 522 right back behind Bobby Jacks is another one. Uh, so the one in Bentonville was going to set on top of the river. We were all real concerned with the pollution of the river. Uh, they had a Joyce Engineering, it was a company in County Hard. They come in. And this committee, we looked at everything they were doing, how they did it, where it was set. We had representatives that came and talked, not personally myself, that came and talked to the board. The board listened. This was over a year process of, of selecting the landfill. Now, with everything the committee did, and worked with the county, we come up with, they sent it to Luray Recycling, which is a lot better deal. But can you imagine if Andy Guest Park was a landfill? Because it come this close to being one. It was the ideal candidate because it was for sale. The company had it, it was for sale. It was thousands of some acres, it was for sale. And it was going to be, it was going that way. So, you know, our previous board listened to us. And it took more than one time. You know, I agree you've got to cut it. You can't let somebody speak all night long. But sometimes it needs to be more than three. And I realize some people come here and keep beating a dead dog, telling you the same thing. 12 times a year, but sometimes it's needed, and that was one time. And all I can say is just think about before you vote, because you know, would we have wanted 522 where we were trying to get industrial in to be a landfill, or would we want it, Andy Guess Park not to exist and to be a landfill? Uh, you know, we fought that, and they listened to us. Uh, three times a year, I'm against. Thank you. Please come forward. John Costello, Druid, Hillfront Loyal. 
I didn't have any intention of coming tonight to speak, but I heard that um, a speaker by the name of Melanie, right here, came up and stated that Dan Witten told her that he had researched the counties around our area as far as what they permitted for people to come and speak before their bodies. If I understand correctly, he told me he did that research and this was what it was going to be based on. Now, Melanie testified that none of the other counties have anything that even slightly resembles it, and I think what Mr. Witten did, if that's true, it was a bald-faced lie that was used only to influence the people and you. If that's true, we don't know. If I'm wrong, I apologize. Otherwise, it's your duty, in my opinion, to investigate this issue. And if I'm, if Miss Melanie is found to be correct, Mr. Whitney should be out on his ass. Thank you. May I address that comment, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, just to correct it, I, I did speak to Melanie, I had a nice hair last name, sorry, so say it right earlier. And I told her that we have a local government attorney listserv. Every attorney across the state. I told her I looked at the list, sir. I never told her I looked at every adjacent county. I said that York County provided us a sample that was on our list, sir. And I had also added other counties across the state. I never said, I never told her, I left, she can correct me if I'm wrong, but my recollection of our conversation is that I never said I looked at every adjacent county. I said, Let me interrupt you for a second and get right out of here. I am not accusing you. I'm only stating that this may be the case. I think these people have to investigate what happened, take your testimonies, and then come to a conclusion. I say I apologize if she was wrong or I was wrong, but if I'm right and she's right, you heard what I said. You shouldn't wait for them to kick you out. You didn't do your job, you just lied to the woman. If that's true, thank you. We have someone else that wants to speak. Well, since this went to question and answer, I feel like it it's not good. We did um, what you did say, the lift serve. When we were first talking, um, I asked you, um, as I asked Mr. Murray, uh, I was just trying to get clarification as to why, like where this rule is coming from. And he said, well, this, we're trying to keep up with the times and um, we're trying to follow suit with what the other localities are doing. And then I did get specific and I asked you, okay, well, did you? talk to the other counties because this was also what was told to me that the other localities waived bond fees for hospitals, which once I looked into it, found that was also not true, um, that there was one hospital down in Richmond that had done that, but again, Loudon, Prince William, Fairfax, <coughs> and Frederick had never done such a thing. And so when we spoke, you did say um, that it was specifically York County, and um, but York County isn't near us. And so I like to fully investigate things before we just say, hey, all these other counties are doing it, this is great. So I just pick a random three. I figure Frederick is pretty similar to us in location, and, and we might be a little bit bigger, but in size. And then we've got um, Prince William and Loudoun, which are both considerably larger, so I would expect that they would have an issue with even more people wanting to speak at these meetings. And when I spoke with um, all three of those counties, which are nearby counties, all of them, as I stated tonight, made it very clear, none of them limit to three times in a year. And that may have been an error on your part, but it's, when you're voting on something like this, I feel like some research needs to be done. I had 24 hours to pull together information about this, you guys have had clearly since the beginning of January, at least, I was able to pick up the telephone and call these counties and get these specifics. I would have really appreciated if all of you voting on it would have picked up the telephone and asked those same questions. 
not just with this topic, but also with the hospital bond that cost us millions of dollars by following misinformation that other counties did this, because they don't. So let's follow suit with these other counties and try and get the public more involved. That's. I just looked at Loudoun County. They three minutes is their limit on uh, speaking. Three, I, I didn't say that they didn't have a three minute limit. Sorry, I, I, actually, to be clear, I, I have all that information too. Prince William County does have a three minute limit. Frederick um, has a three minute limit. However, if you exceed that limit, they will allow you to speak again at the end of the meeting. Loudoun County only allows two and a half minutes. However, you can also sign up for additional time. The, the things that I said, and I stand by what I said in my speech, is that there is no limit on th this three times a year rule. None of them had that. And honestly, each one of them, when I called, they, they asked me, where are you getting it? What? They, they, they were completely confused as to why that would even be a thing. So, um, yeah, and then, and then also, of course, pointing out that the number of people per per minute. Uh, the only one that limits the amount of time for public comment was Loudoun County, and they said that's just been as a result of their exponential growth, and they limit it to an hour. So for us to limit it to 15 to 20 minutes, limiting it to three to five people, it, it's kind of extreme. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Who else was it? Please. Um, all of us out here in the audience. David Antwerp, please. Yes. Christy Atwood, 1255 Pilgrim's Way, Bentonville. Um, all of us out here in the audience, we're all from different backgrounds. Some people would like to see more people coming to county. I would like to see more cows coming to the county. But here's my issue. We all want transparency, and that's not what we have. All of us out here are different, but you five represent us. You five are their bosses. So when we have a big energy company that wants to come here and has $5 million in escrow with the EEA to put solar panels on all of our schools and save us $150,000 a year, when he wants to meet with Doug Stanley, then Mr. Fox, you need to get him an appointment. Doug is your employee. Dan is your employee. David Bean is your employee. Y'all need to do something about these people and about the criminal activities. I have went to Richmond. They saw, one of the board members looked at me and said, you have been putting up with the old boys network with a right. I have gotten no work. I had rats in my house, which I'm sure y'all saw at Christmas time, because I was not happy with it. But none of y'all have answered my emails or even attempted to help me. We want you to listen to us. We want you to be transparent. I know the sunshine laws have been broken. I know from the meeting of the LBBC at the local board of the Building Appeals, They've been broken because Witten wrote statements for conflict of interest that didn't even apply the proper law. Found that out in, Rich in Richmond on the 11th. I mean, it's just crazy. We are a county that could have so much, and now we have so little. But we need to have transparency so that everybody can see what's going on, and people need to own up to their mistakes. Thank you. Who else? Please. Hi, D Schools, 467 Freeze Road, London. It's been a while since I stood up here. Um, in the 15 years I've lived in Warren County, I stood up here a lot of times. And um, one thing I can say is, you know, the time limits are definitely, I mean, across the state, they have time limits. There's time limits for a reason. Go back 10 years ago, I'm sure you would have liked to have told plenty of us to shut up when we were standing up here. Um, the three times per year speaking on the same subject, you guys are going into budgets. If I want to stand up here at every meeting from now till the time you pass that budget and talk about that budget, I should be allowed to. I'm going to take the EDA stuff and everything outside of this. And for three years, me, Linda McDonough, quite a few others, three years we stood here. We brought you more and more and more information on Shenandoah Farm Sanitary District. It took us three years for you guys to even start asking Shenandoah Farms for records. We stood here from 2005 to 2010 until we got results. You would be limiting that now. If you would have looked into it before the three years, 
we wouldn't have stood up here that many times. The consistency of allowing some people to speak 10 minutes while others are silenced at three minutes. That shouldn't happen, and it's happened over the years, you know it. It's hard to keep. You guys, I understand the position you're in. I understand that you want to try to listen to everybody. These rules don't even allow for what you have been allowing. Over the years, you've had more public speakers than 20 minutes will allow. You have always allowed it. You have always come back and allowed people to continue speaking. You have broke your public hearings. You broke your public presentations, went to public hearings, and came back to those public presentations. You're not even allowing that in the own rules you're writing right now. You're making it more stringent than what you've ever allowed in the 15 years I've stood up here. I ask you to re-look at that three year on the same subject for more than one reason. Who's going to keep track of it? Who are you going to pay to keep track of a spreadsheet, maybe, of what I decide to talk about from time to time? You're going to give me five minutes now instead of three. I appreciate that. Sometimes I like to have more than five. Sometimes I don't need three. But if I switch over two minutes into that and suddenly start talking about something that I talked about three times already this year, is somebody going to be sitting up there with a spreadsheet going, oh, oh, no, she's already talked about that three times. I mean, I think you're getting a little ridiculous on it. And you really should re-look that three times per year. Once again, I will go back to the budget. Budget time is happening. You're having meetings now. You will be having meetings from now and through April. When there's another public hearing <coughs> on the budget, which people don't come to, by the way. Um, but if I want to come to every meeting, I'm going to expect to be allowed to talk about that budget every single time between now and April when you pass it. And I hear the dinger, so thank you very much for your time. <laughs> Anybody else care to come forward? Come forward, please. Just very quickly, uh, John Anderson, 552 River Drive, uh, Front Loyal, and I do thank you for your service. I just want to point out, um, I think there's a big difference between a listserv check and picking up the phone and talking to uh, representatives from neighboring counties. If there, is, if there is a vote not to change the rule, I think that's fine. But of those of you contemplating changing the rule, I think you need to verify that the information heard tonight about neighboring counties is correct. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would care to come forward and speak at this time? Second call, anyone else care to come forward and speak? Third and final call, anyone care to come forward and speak? This public hearing is closed. Oh, man. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> For a motion. I move that the Board of Supervisors keep the current language to the Warren County Code Section 56 slash 3. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? No discussion? No. Go ahead, discussion. Sorry. I'm not going to support Excuse me. I'm not going to support that motion because I think we need to make some changes. Um, and what I was going to recommend, and I don't know how we want to do this, so that would get more confusing than it is. But what I would suggest, and I appreciate everybody coming up and speaking. Um, let me see. And there again, I think the changes I would make would make, make it less restrictive too, so we would not have to reapply or have to re advertise for a uh, public hearing. Um, so you had to go. Let me throw this out there and see if you follow. Um, if you look at the ordinance as it's written, what I went through and what I was going to suggest was during the public presentation, comment period, speakers waiting to address the board shall clearly state their name and address. I think everybody can agree on that. And then what I was going to suggest is that we get rid of any time limits. Now, the caveat with that would be we remove the public presentations to the end of the meeting. And then that way we wouldn't interfere with people who are already on the agenda. And then that way people can go and talk as much as they want on the subject. The main thing though is, and I don't know how you can regulate that. I want to hear the constituents. Everybody up here wants to hear what they have to say. The concern though, 
we deal with the zoning, uh, planning, trash, pickup, the dump, all those things. We're not really here, and we can't really address national issues. And they are important, but there's nothing, very little that we can do along those lines. Anyway, the next, um, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that. Um, <coughs> each speaker, and then the other thing too, I'll go ahead and strike that as well, and get rid of the three times per year, for 12 month period portion as well. Um, and again, that basically opens it up. Public presentation would be held at the end of the meeting. There would be uh, no restrictions on an individual, <coughs> on the time. Although I did like the one lady said something about there was one place and then they had an hour limit. Um, I would like to see that maybe put in at least to see how things go and it turns into a brief problem. So that's what I would suggest then. Uh, that we limit the public presentations at the end of the meeting to one hour and no limit on the, uh, the time for any one speaker. And there again, I would hope that people could be uh, precise and salient in the points. The other thing though, the only problem with doing it that way is, and, it, and that's why I think we may have moved it up <coughs> some time back to the beginning, is because if we do it at the end of the meeting, and there's something on the agenda that somebody wants to speak to that is not a public hearing, then we've already voted on it without hearing that. So what I would also propose is at the beginning of the meeting, there would be a public presentation period where a citizen could comment on anything on the current agenda except for a public hearing. I think we would be okay, maybe, if we put in some type of time limit, I'm okay not putting in a time limit because there again, people can uh, um, can, can speak. There may be something that's yeah, not yeah, a public hearing. Excuse me. Sounds, Sounds like you guys have something to start, start with Wait, right there. Okay, I'm sorry, my bad. I shouldn't have asked you. <laughs> public hearing is over, so yeah, we appreciate the comments. Um, so, <clears throat> having said that, and it, 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 I won't say it, this occurred off the cuff. And I've been thinking about it since this came up and since we got some of the concerns voiced. And I don't know, Mr. Whitten, did you follow some of the changes I said? They're all less restrictive, so you want to have to re-advertise it. Okay. You can make a motion to approve this tonight, or you could postpone the decision, but I wanted to discuss it more. Now, the only other thing in that is that, come closer, Roger. Right? Um, <laughs> the only, the only, did you, did you get my good side? Because I don't think I had one. Um, now, the only other thing, though, I would maintain that we continue or, or that we would strike the, the portion about two members coming forward. Because in this case here, this doesn't restrict anybody. So I don't think that portion is needed. And this here would also codify those changes in our ordinance. And so future boards would not have to adopt new rules for public presentations because they'd already be in the, the ordinance itself unless they wanted to change the ordinance at a future date, and that would be up to a future board. And based on some of the comments tonight, some of us may not get reelected. So, uh, but anyway, so would Mr. Sayer withdraw his motion, and then we could put those changes in place, or would you go ahead and make amendments and vote on those amendments at the same time? No, I'm going to keep my motion okay. as this, because I don't think it's broken, so I'll try and fix it. Okay. Hey. Yes. Okay. And if I'm going to speak, I mean, you know, Archie and I had a concern. We thought there was some hanky panky going on at the EDA. And we were opposed three to two. And we acted professionally, and the board spoke as a whole. And Archie and I kept quiet. And then before I know it, my damn phone number shows up at the crime scene. <laughs> I didn't hear apology from anybody or any concern from on this board, but I'm going to tell you that this needs to be there, that nobody's going to want, one supervisor is not going to want to sponsor somebody just to come up. That, that's sometimes going out on a limb, you're asking a lot. But if somebody wants to come freely to our board and speak, and then there's two members 
since 1975, and I think that lady spoke so eloquently about her grandfather, Mr. Bagger. That was impressive. That that's a safeguard in there for a citizen to have a right to speak. And I think that that should be there and should stay there. Yes. 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 Can I ask a question, please? What happens to that one person who doesn't have two board members that want to let them speak? They don't get to speak at all. The way I uh, redid this was everybody, anybody can come and speak at any meeting. No women on the meetings. So that to me is more restrictive than what you're proposing by keeping the same language in place. You've got to have two members who want to let somebody speak. If two members don't, they cannot speak. Under what my recommendation was, they would have the opportunity to speak. I mean, I don't fully, I'm trying to be very polite, Mr. Carter, I like you a lot, but I, did not, I don't fully understand everything you presented. I mean, that, that's a lot that you've said right there. I don't, do you understand his motion, Mr. Hedden? It's basically what he's saying. You, what he's proposing is changing the code section to state that there's an hour of public presentation time. Anyone can come up and speak. There's no limit. They can speak for 60 minutes if there's only one speaker. If there's five people signed up, you can reach 12 minutes. There's a limit of 60 minutes. I guess that's what um, the lady was saying in Atlanta County. It's an hour limit on public presentations. So there's no limit. They can speak on the same subject every meeting. Um, you know, there's two meetings a month. They can talk 24 meetings a year. Um, and there's, there's no issue there. It's just the only limit really is that there would be an hour. If I understood Mr. Carter correctly, and you yes. correct me, if that's the way I understood So basically, the, like I think you said, at the end of the meeting, there would be public presentation. At this point, we would limit it to an hour. However, there again, just like the current rules, that's more or less a guideline. And there again, if they wanted to be extended to the end of the, the uh, discretion of the chair, if the chair decided they don't want to, come back to the uh, majority of the board to overrule them. And that would be at the end of the public presentation, at the end of the meeting. And then that way we don't have to worry about holding people up that are already on the agenda. As far as the, um, the other public presentation period, that would be at the beginning of the meeting. And it would only be allowed for people to speak on specific items that are on the uh, the agenda that night, excluding the public hearing. Um, and by doing that, I don't think you need to have two representatives from this board want uh, allow somebody to speak. To me, that's more restricted. As far as placing something on the agenda, and I don't recall it happening very often, but I don't see a problem with that. And I think you said, if I heard you correctly, and I don't mean to talk to you, you should be addressed to the chair, but I think you said it was one of our members would be hard pressed to put something on the agenda for a citizen. I think no problem. So it's germane to count the business. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to speak back and forth. I, you you already just know, go ahead. Okay. Well, all right. If if a if a supervisor has a citizen that has a concern, and that citizen wants to come and speak, that should be unfettered that they should be able to come and speak. Now. If I'm just one person and four of them disagree under our current ordinance that says two people can. Now, if you're saying that they can just come by themselves and you're saying they can have up to an hour of presentation, is that what you're saying? At the end of the meeting, without having to be formally on the agenda. To be formally on the agenda, they can need to be sponsored. I mean, we've never even had a work session on any of this. We haven't had a work session at any time. I mean, Archie and I have been blindsided by this thing from the get-go. Nobody's discussed this with us. So, I mean, I don't, I'm not prepared to vote to change our rules in such a dramatic way. I'm not saying it's a bad way, but it's just we haven't even discussed it at a work session. And again, it's not broken. I think the people who have come to speak, uh, what that one lady mentioned, um, we, we went, I think it was 1 or 2 o'clock after midnight sometimes. And I was more than happy to be there. That's why I ran and got elected. I was hoping that there wouldn't be times that our meetings would last a long time. Listening to both of us, Mr. Carter's got a lot of good points to us in both of Do you want to change your motion, table this to a work session, and re-enter this? 
Some of this is miscommunication because the three times speaking on an item isn't something new that's happening now. That happened in 2017. So it's already been a fact two going on three years. And again, maybe you missed that too, but I'm willing to get rid of that portion. I mean, you're willing to get rid of it, yes. Okay. okay. All I was doing was going out and I was checking what I believe to be what Jennifer McDonald had done. Now wait, you're asking. I believe that Jennifer McDonald, when she did, when they said the, the property was free and then it wasn't free. That's all I was checking into. I discussed it with Dan Whitten. I discussed it with Doug Stanley. Before I knew it, somehow, my number along with, sorry Mike, but you know, Mike Graham's at a, at a crime scene. He, he and I never even talked about anything about any of this stuff. I mean, it was ridiculous. <coughs> and I mean, and then Mr. Akers come up and spoke. Uh, he has his own personal opinions. What I'm trying to say is, Tony, is that's, that's a lot when you're going to ask if somebody's going to sponsor somebody and, there's, and it's a heated topic, there's things that could go on outside these meeting halls and people do things, they frame people, they do all kinds of stuff. And I, I think that if somebody wants to come and speak, they should come and speak because they want to. And if, if, and if the way the rules are written, if two of us want to support them, they can speak. I mean, actually, when you were chairman, you never even brought that up. You just let Mr. Aker speak. You never asked me. Now, Archie one time did speak up and said he wanted to hear from him, but you never, you never got two people because I never, I, you never asked me. I'm not going there. Um, the thing of it is, the, 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 to me, what I propose is less restrictive. And I don't know. Does that make sense? And I agree. if I may, I just want to ask uh, for a show of hands only. Does that make sense as far as being less restrictive? No. But he was saying like an hour total for everyone. And I understood you saying an hour per person. I said it'd be an hour for these to, at the end of the period. But there's, you know, but there's no time limit. So one person. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Like an hour speaking. If you're going to speak, you come forward to the podium. You don't call out from the seat. There's a yes. yes. the yes. yes. show of hands. Well, I wasn't prepared to come to a question and answer, which is what this whole circus has turned into. This is quite embarrassing, and I hope it's all residents of Warren County watching this circus, because if not, it's going to leak out to everyone anyways. But it's quite confusing because the hour at the end, if it's one person, so I can come, if I'm the only person signed up and speak for the entire hour and present and not be interrupted, Yes? Okay, then that part I have clarification on. If anybody else has questions, please question and answer now. Open the poll. Okay, so because I understood you were saying there was no time limit, so if Melanie wanted to come up here and speak for an hour, she would have an hour. But then you had said it was an hour total at the end. So if one person takes up the whole time, then everybody, every oh, everyone else is out of luck. Is that? Again, that can be addressed as far as the chair's discretion. As far as that goes, I don't care. Make it unlimited for everybody. Okay. We'll see I mean, how it goes. That's making government more accessible. No, and maybe this is what we need is like town like town forums that you can have questions answered. All right, for control purposes. We have a motion on the floor from Tom. Personally, for discussion. I think that the motion should be withdrawn, and we should table this to a work session. Work sessions are open to the public. They're not a closed session. Okay, to help, to help the chairman here, I've spoke with Archie Fox, and he's, the two of us have been through this thick and thin. So he has recommended that we I'll withdraw my motion. I will. You can withdraw your second. And then we're going to make, we'll make the motion on table. Yes. The motion of postpone. Postpone. Mr. Chairman, I move that we postpone this discussion. Second. Second. And if you could set the date of the work session, um, 
the University of Best Bunny should have a date. So do you want to do the next meeting? First meeting in February, February 5th? I would say the second. It's your call. I would say the second. Or if you do the night meeting, what should be the yeah, 19th? Yeah, people are and you, and people are available at the night meeting. If we do it at the day meeting, the people who are working are not able to come. We need input. We need support. We're not hiding anything. There's things go. There's things going on that we're not allowed to talk about. We signed confidentiality agreements about certain items. And please, the more you push us to tell you, the more trouble we can get in if we open our mouths. We can be sued. You don't consider that, and I wish you would. There are a lot of things going on. We have a motion. We have a second. I have a question. And Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, have you got the proper date on that? Okay. What was the date on that? February 19th. 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 At 7 o'clock. The question is, we have a report session. Let's see. I don't know what the agenda is going to be like on that meeting. Mm -hmm. Well, we got the budget coming up. That would affect that meeting. And the thing with the work session is, it's basically for the chance for this board to discuss different things. It's not a public hearing at that time. And if we discuss it at work session on the 19th, we put it on the agenda for the end of March uh, to take action. That's not going to be a public hearing then either. So I don't know. I mean, since we're going through. Will we have time to discuss this at the work session on the 19th and advertise for another public hearing, although I don't want to have any good people come out? You, you can advertise for the work session. Yeah. Okay. And in the meantime, I can look at the adjacent localities. I can do a spreadsheet of what all adjacent localities do, all five, six adjacent localities. But we have to start somewhere. Another thing to mention, I think all of us have uh, county websites or uh, email addresses, so you're more than welcome to contact one for all of us with other ways to maybe look at it. So I still feel like the proposal just to let everybody speak without having two members is totally so less restricted than what's currently on the book. So that's all I have to say. We have a motion. We have a second. We're let us finish our motion. Piece again, edit the agenda. Why can't you just stop right now, go into closed session, and come back and get this taken care of? Call the question. Close the question. The motion is postponed. 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 Aye. Ms. Glavis? Aye. Mr. Chairman? Aye. Mr. Sayer? Aye. Mr. Fox? Aye. So we will take this up again the night of the 19th of February. And I'd like, if I can, for one minute, just to, to, for the record, in case anybody's counting, we allow 21 people to speak tonight. That's pretty good.